This is Brian Rowe, or Sart, for Mythic MTG Tech number 336, where I'm doing a Turbo Depths Speed Land deck as a request for someone on the channel here. I asked what legacy deck people wanted to see last month, and I've been looking into this one pretty heavily, and it is a super cool budget legacy deck. And by budget, I mean it's about half the price of traditional land decks because it doesn't run Tabernacle, which is a crazy like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar card. It doesn't run Grove of the Burn Willows. It doesn't run Mox Diamond, which has doubled in price over the last year because it's on the reserve list. It runs Dark Depths and a lot of things to try to enable the Dark Depths combo as fast as possible, thus the name Turbo Depths. The cost of this deck is about $800 or so, which is still pretty expensive, but for a deck that you could play forever in Legacy and have awesome turn one combo wins, it's rather reasonably priced. You could save a pretty good amount of money having the cost by cutting out the bayous and playing overgrown tombs, and honestly, in all the playtest games I've played with this deck, it would have mattered in one in 30 games. The deck is a hardcore, super fast combo deck, and except in very rare situations, that two life usually does not matter at all. It is not like the slower control decks where you're trying to stabilize and grind people out with Grove of the Burn Willows. You win super fast or you don't win at all. So shock lands are not really going to affect this deck much at all. The combo is super simple. Dark Depths has a bunch of counters on it. If you get rid of those counters, you get a 20-20. But why get rid of those counters? By spending three mana for each counter, if you can get rid of them for just two mana. Thespian Stage can copy Dark Depths and then have no counters on it, allowing the trigger to go off, giving you a 20-20. Vampire Hex Mage is the old school way to do the exact same thing, and both of those enablers are inside this deck. What makes this deck turbo is that it is super fast. It has eight sources of free mana to enable your search cards so that you can go find everything that you need really, really quickly. It's got snow-covered lands and this awesome card nobody has ever heard of called Into the North. Search your library for a snow-covered land and Dark Depths happens to be a snow land, so you can go get it. Snowlands also have cooler artwork than regular lands. There's lots of search in this deck. Crop Rotate is an all-star. Instant speed search. You usually don't have to worry about wastelands because when they go to waste your land, you play Crop Rotate, sack the land, and then go get another copy of whatever land you needed. Into the North we just talked about. Sylvan Scrying, search for a land card. What more could you possibly want? And Expedition Map, a nice three mana way to continue to add more search to this deck. Lots of ways to protect the combo here. Thought Seize, Duress, Inquisition. You're going to be looking at your opponent's hand to make sure the way is clear really early. Get rid of any of those threats and then go off. Normally, if you're not gold fishing, you're going to be winning about turn three. You've already taken a look at their hand and pulled out their one possible answer. You have main deck Pithing Needle in here. Why? Four Pithing Needles. Because Caracas was just reprinted and you must stop that card. Pithing Needle stops lands from playing activated abilities as long as those abilities aren't mana abilities. The Merit Liege is a legend and getting it bounced back to your hand really, really, really hurts. Main deck Needle is an absolute must in the current environment of death and taxes everywhere. This deck also has a Force of Will. Oh wait, it's better than Force of Will. It's Force of Will plus Void Slime plus more. It counters target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control and it's free if Merit Liege is in play. This is a $1 card that is incredible just broken good. The number of times I've seen not of this world blow people out thinking they had an answer, either game one or game two is really, really high. Beautiful card that makes this deck really competitive. 
Lots of utility lands in here. You saw that there was crop rotate. So you've got built-in answers to a lot of the problems that are out there. Your opponent has the skies filled with Lingering Souls tokens. No big deal. Give your Merit Liege token protection from white. Let's say they've got a pesky Maze of Ith out there. Go get a Ghost Quarter. They're playing Dredge. You've got a main deck answer in this deck that you can go search up with many different cards in your deck. Your sideboard is also going to have Beseju and Caracas, both cards that are great sideboard cards that you're going to be able to search up. This has a wonderful utility toolbox built directly into the deck. Cards to fear with this deck. Pithing Needle is a little bit annoying, although it doesn't stop both targets at the same time. You've got both the Vampire Hex Mages and you've got your Thespian Stages. They've got to choose which one to name. Stifle is the one card that can really blow you out. Tempo decks can be a little bit rough because you're probably going to have to go off twice. And if they're playing Stifle, a Stifle at the right time may just give them enough of an opportunity to win. Caracas we talked about. You've got main deck pick the needles. Lots of needles for Caracas. Swords to Plowshares. Really, really good card. Gaining 20 life is a little bit annoying. It gives you a lot of time to try to go off again, which you can often go off twice. But that's another reason that the step is in there so that you can go grab protection from white if you need it. And Blood Moon is a complete nightmare for you. You've got to be able to side against Blood Moon. You've got to be able to deal with Blood Moon. And if they're playing some type of Turbo Blood Moon where they're putting it out on turn one or turn two, it could be a real problem for you. The sideboard here has great answers. Abrupt Decay deals with most of those permanents. Doesn't hit the lands, although you've got your Ghost Quarter main deck. Additionally, more hand destruction with Duress. Bashaju comes in if you need to get around counter spells while still searching things up. And Rite of Consumption helps you get around anything that is stopping your 2020 from attacking. Is it a stalled board state with a bunch of flyers? Is it a maze of it. I mean, throw that 2020 at your opponent, and often you may even have the Besaju in play so that you can make sure that that doesn't get countered. The sideboard here is very solid. There's also a pair of surgical extractions in this particular makeup. Um, I am less of a fan of those. I would actually go with a um, another knot of this world and maybe even up the duress count. If you want to spend a lot of money on this deck, it's going to be a little bit tough. Japanese foil crop rotates. That's what you got to do. Super expensive. You'll take that like two, three dollar card and turn it into a hundred and fifty dollar card. Do I recommend buying those? No, that's a crazy price for a card that is not on the reserve list that could easily be reprinted. That is super popular for people. But if you're going to make the deck look cool, I would definitely go for the snow covered lands from cold snap that are foil this picture does not do them justice they are stunningly beautiful i've got a few of each of them so that i can put them in decks and they are well worth the few extra dollars there now is the time to pick up this deck we've seen some crucial reprints for this deck in the last two years that have really dropped the price significantly. The earliest of those predates that even a little bit more in Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize used to be a $25, $30 card and is now down to about 10. Urborg, same thing, super cheap right now. And Dark Depths has hit right about its low currently at that $30 to $45 range. A lot of people opened the From the Vaults and didn't want the Dark Depths, so you can often find a better deal than this. I've got a friend who was able to put this whole deck together for about $500 and some solid trades. The big question, though, is which Merit Liege token would you use for this deck? Are you going to use the original one that is super shiny, very different method on it, very tough to read, the new one that is very clear, simple, classic, or your own custom Merit Liege token. So to find the best tech to hit your opponent for 20, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And also to my sponsor, chess.com. If you want to play me at chess, please head over to chess.com. Until next time.
choose the cards wisely. <laughs>